Welcome to my presentation of a comparison of fictitious play and smooth fictitious play in repeated games. In this presentation, I'll be describing both of these algorithms and summarizing some of the theoretical results on their convergence. My main goal is to expose the differences between these algorithms and some of their key properties through a series of interesting simulations. My hope is that this will provide you with an intuition that will help with understanding the implications of some of the fundamental results in the literature. So let's get started. So in fictitious play, each agent I chooses a peer strategy in the kth round as a best response to their opponent's empirical average strategies. And each round we update the empirical averages just based on a simple average. Um, and uh, there's many different notions of convergence for fictitious play, but a common one is this convergence in belief. So we say that if these empirical averages converge to some point, say a Nash equilibrium of a game, uh, then the fictitious play converges in belief. Now, this notion of convergence is a little bit deceptive. And as we'll see, sometimes the actual play of the game can look very different from playing the Nash equilibrium strategy, even if we do have this type of convergence. So in SFP, in each round, each agent plays a perturbed best response to their opponent's empirical average strategy. Now, there's two big differences here that I'd like to point out. The first is that this perturbed best response is now a function in that it's single valued. So we can just shoot play the best response directly. Um, and the second thing is that now the agents are playing a mixed strategy. Um, and so this notion of convergence to a mixed strategy starts to make more sense. Uh, and this is important, and this is one of the motivating reasons behind this introduction of SFP. So let's talk a little bit about perturbed utility functions. One way to perturb your utility function is to use some small deterministic function. And this makes the overall function concave and have a unique maximizer. Uh, alternatively, we can consider some random perturbation. So add some random noise to our utility function. And on the surface, these two types of perturbations look really different. Uh, however, Hofbauer showed that uh, under some mild constraints, that is that this uh, noise has strictly positive density, uh, every stochastic perturbation can be shown to be equivalent to some deterministic perturbation uh, in the sense that they induce equivalent dynamics under smooth fictitious play. So to really understand SFP, it's important to understand how the perturbation impacts your best response function. So we'll go over a simple example here. The Gibbs entropy is a commonly used deterministic perturbation, which is parametrized by this epsilon temperature parameter. Uh, and the resulting best response, if you use this perturbation, is this logit function, uh, which has this sort of soft max form. Now, in this example here, let's consider a simple bimatrix game. So we know these bimatrix games, they have these sharp best response maps. But as we introduce this perturbation, the perturbed best responses become smoother and smoother as we increase this epsilon parameter. Uh, but one thing to note is that their intersection also begins to deviate from this point here. And we'll see, we can treat this sort of as an approximation of this Nash equilibrium uh, as some perturbed Nash equilibrium. So throughout this presentation, we're going to see lots of simulations of the dynamics of fictitious play and smooth fictitious play. But before we move on, let's just quickly discuss the mathematical underpinnings of those dynamics and their differences. Um, so if we look at the state update equation and we sort of take the expectation of it to derive the mean dynamics, uh, if we work it out and uh, assume a martingale noise assumption here for this term, we find that this is what the dynamics of the system look like. So these are essentially the best response dynamics. Um, and SFP is governed by this differential equation, while FP is governed by this differential inclusion, which is generally much harder to work with. 
but one thing we can see from the formula form of these uh, is that the rest points are actually NEs. Uh, and this will be a very useful property for us going forward with our simulations. So the first type of games we're going to take a deep dive into are two player zero sum games. And both FP and SFP are proven to converge in these types of games. For FP, the proof was given by Julia Robinson in 1950 through a fairly simple recursive argument. And she showed that essentially the expected value of the game converges to the min-max value as the number of rounds goes to infinity. Uh, it's fairly simple to show that from her proof that this also implies convergence in belief that we discussed earlier. Now for SFP, this was proved by Hofbauer in 2002 through a Lyapunov argument. And so he showed that the perturbed best response dynamic converges um, and uh, what, what he's established essentially is that these empirical averages converge to uh, an NE. Uh, and so what he established is actually convergence in belief, as we just talked about, but also a convergence in behavior. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means shortly. This is a simulation of a two-player zero-sum game. Uh, it's a fairly simple game with a single symmetric mixed Nash equilibrium, where the first value is 0 0.2 and the second value is 0 0.8. In this case, both FP and SFP converge, just as predicted by our theory. Now, SFP seems to converge more quickly, while FP oscillates more, uh, more sharply. And uh, an another important thing to note is that SFP is converging to a perturbed NE. So we're using a fixed temperature parameter, uh, Gibbs entropy perturbation here, and this is causing the best response functions to intersect at a point which is slightly different from that of the true NE. And that's why we have this convergence, in this case, slightly below and slightly above the true NE. So what happens as we adjust this temperature parameter? Well, if the temperature parameter is too high, the perturbed NE is very far from the true NE, and we can see that from the figure. Uh, now, as we start to decrease the temperature parameter, the perturbed NE gets closer and closer to the true NE, and this is because the perturbed best response functions begin to look more and more like the true best response. Um, now, I'm supposed to be comparing SFP and FP, uh, but actually SFP in the limit, as we bring this temperature parameter lower and lower, the actual dynamics of SFP begin to approach that of FP. Uh, and that is, again, fundamentally because both of these are governed by these best response dynamics. And as the perturbed best response gets closer and closer to the true best response, uh, SFP starts to look like FP. And again, we can see that from the figure here. Uh, with the very, very small temperature function, we have these rapid, jagged oscillations uh, in even the SFP dynamics, which is something we expect of the FP dynamics. So this next slide is, I think, the most important for understanding the fundamental differences between FP and SFP. In the previous few slides, we've just been looking at the empirical average actions uh, and how they've converged to the mixed NE. Uh, and that's fine if you're just trying to compute the mixed NE, but what if you're trying to develop a strategy which behaves like that mixed NE in the long run? So to really understand that, you have to look more closely at the game. So uh, we have two plots here. One is the average payoff for the past 100 plays, and the other is the cumulative average payoff. So in the case of the cumulative average payoff, FP, SFP, and the Nash equilibrium play all converge quickly to the value of this game, which is this minus 2.2. But if you look at the average payoff for the past 100 plays for um, SFP, S FP, and the NE play, you'll see that SFP and the NE play look similar, but FP looks quite different. And that's because SFP is actually also playing a mixed strategy. So once that mixed strategy becomes very close to the NE, 
the two become basically indistinguishable. But in FP, you're always playing a peer strategy. And so what that means is uh, you'll have sharp changes once the empirical average passes a certain threshold. So uh, it's jumping up and down here because it's playing suboptimally because its empirical average of play is a poor estimate for what its opponents are actually going to play. Uh, but over time, eventually it corrects itself, this empirical average, um, and, and it begins to oscillate. And that's where you see these, these sharp oscillations here. They're coming from the fact that um, in FP, uh, the agent is playing the same bad play over and over and over again. And we'll see that th this fact that it's playing these peer strategies uh, is really detrimental to how it behaves in, in the game in the long run. So even if it's converging in these, in these actions, uh, the empirical average to the mixed any, the actual payoffs could look quite different. So not in two, two player zero sum games, but in general by matrix games, the payoffs could look extremely different from what you have if you actually play the mixed any, or even if you play smooth fictitious play. So by matrix games, are a class of games where SFP and FP don't universally converge, but there are some subsets of biomatrix games which do converge. This includes two by two games, games with an interior ESS, games of identical interest, and of course, two player zero sum games, which we already discussed. But there's also several famous examples of biomatrix games in which neither FP nor SFP converge. And we'll look at examples of these. We can consider a simple two by two cooperation game. Even though this game is very simple, it exhibits many of the differences between FP and SFP. We can see that there are cases where an equilibrium can appear to be stable for FP, but not for SFP, and cases where FP can converge to a mixed equilibrium, but the payoff doesn't converge to what we expect. This game has three equilibria, one at x equals one, one at x equals zero, and the other at x equals a half. FP can converge to both of the pure NEs and the mixed NE under different initial conditions. In SFP, however, the mixed NE appears to be unstable, as even after a thousand trials with different initial conditions, eventually SFP begins to converge to one of the peer strategies a notable difference between FP and SFP. In the previous example, the mixed NE had a value of 0 0.5. However, in the case where fictitious play converges to the mixed NE, it has a value of 0. That is, in this coordination game, FP is coordinating to achieve the worst possible outcome in every round. We can see the distribution of actions in the figure on the right. And FP switches between the two zero payoff strategies. So, though it found this mixed NE, there seems to be some fundamental issues with FP as a method of playing a repeated game. Particularly, the fact that FP always involves the play of a peer strategy is what causes the problem. And this is why SFP was formulated. The previous game was guaranteed to converge because it was a two by two game and a potential game. But one only needs to consider three by three games before we start to see examples of games in which FP doesn't converge. In the 1960s, Shapley noted that FP would not converge in this three by three game. For these and many other initial conditions, including interior initial conditions, FP will cycle through a set of actions, each time playing the same action for exponentially longer before switching. Later, it was also observed that SFP can also fall into this same cycle and fail to converge. This lack of convergence can be seen in this plot. It is still possible, however, for FP to converge in Shapley's game under some initial conditions. Below, we can see the trajectory of a convergent initial condition and a non-convergent one on a simplex. To conclude, let's go over some of what we learned today. 
We learned FP and SFP converge in many different senses and in many classes of repeated games. We also learned that subtle differences and small perturbations can lead to drastically different behaviors in FP and SFP for some games. And even in games where FP converges to a mixed NE in its empirical average action, the behavior can look very different from how an agent playing the mixed NE behaves. And we learned that SFP remedies many of these issues by playing mixed strategies, and it can converge in behavior to a mixed NE. For further information, please consult these references or my forthcoming paper.